Amen. Well, what a great reminder that no matter what is happening in our world, the church is still moving forward. Uh, it may look a little different on how we are having church or doing church, but that doesn't mean that the results slow down, does it? Uh, if anything, this is a prime opportunity for us to be the church, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Good evening, New Hope. It's good to have you join us online, uh, wherever you may be watching and joining us. Glad that we are able to have you join us today. Uh, this is our third Sunday, being exclusively online, only just watching it digitally on your laptop, your phone, your TV, whatever it may be. And uh, we are so thankful for technology, glad that we have these resources in place and people that um, know how to help us in the, those areas. But I can speak for the pastors um, and myself, we really miss you guys. And uh, we are so excited to have you come back um, as soon as possible, whenever we're able to, that's going to be a great day for us. Uh, Wednesday nights, our youth, our kids pastors, they've been doing a fantastic job of resourcing our kids, our teenagers, um, with services, with lessons, worship sessions, all the sorts. And so we're so thankful for them and that all that they've been able to do. Um, I've noticed small groups, they've been having Zoom calls, you know, just these conference call, video t call type things to meet with their small group just to connect. And I think if anything, it, it's this time of our life that we realize we need connection. We need to be around people and uh, it makes us uh, desire that even more so. Uh, the church hasn't slowed down. If anything, this time and season has forged us. It's, it's making us stronger, I believe, and we're more committed even more so to the, to the good news of Jesus Christ. And you know what? We're still the church. Thankful that we have a building, but we're still the church and we can still move forward. So hopefully you're surviving this time at home also. Um, a little quarantine update from my home. We've, we've survived so far. We're doing well. We've gotten a lot of cleaning done. I'm sure some of you have done the same. We've spent some time outside. We've gone hiking, played basketball. We've watched a lot of cooking shows. A lot of dude perfect trick shot videos. Uh, we um, started to paint our bathroom and that turned into a lot, lot bigger project than, than I imagined, but it's done thankfully. And so a lot of things have been getting done at our house. Uh, we've also taken some extra time to pray, to read our Bible, and uh, I encourage you to do the same. Take advantage of this opportunity, of this time and season that we have here. Um, it is difficult to really remember when this all started to take place, like when, when this started to get real for us, the coronavirus where is, began to impact us. And for me, my memory goes back to March 11th, and that was on Wednesday night when the NBA decided to pause their season, to postpone uh, what was taking place and just push pause. And it seemed like at that moment, that for me at least, it began to sink in like this is a real thing. We got to take this more serious. And uh, from there, it, uh, it was like a trickle effect of everything else began to just uh, pause and slow down and stop for a lot of things. And so that's when my memory goes back. And so that was 18 days ago. That was 432 hours ago. That was 25,920 minutes ago for those of you who are counting. And it seems like forever, doesn't it? It seems like we've been in this thing for a really long time. Uh, but when we compare this season that we're in right now of our life to the average lifespan here on earth of 70 years, this is just a drop in the bucket. This is nothing compared to life on earth. You know, 70 years is over 25,000 days, and we're at 18 days. 70 years is over 613,000 hours, and we're just over 400 hours. 70 years is almost 37 million minutes, and we're at just over 25,000 minutes. So when you look at our current time and season that we're in, compared to the average lifespan here on this earth, this is just a short time span. But then if you step back and you look even at a bigger uh, picture of things, 70 years here on this earth is just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity. You know, we will spend eternity somewhere, and uh, the Bible talks about it quite a bit, and we're going to get to there in just a moment. But you've heard it said that life is short, 
And when we think about 70 years, we think, man, that's a long time to be alive. But when you step back and you look at compared to eternity, this is just really short season, a, a moment in the grand scheme of things. James 4, 14 says, what is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And so I want to remind us here tonight that life is short and that we don't belong here. Now, some of you just thought, well, you don't need to remind me of that. Well, too bad I just did. We don't belong here. We're not staying here very long on earth. We've been sent into this world, but we're not of this world. We don't belong here, but we're here for a purpose, and we have a mission to accomplish. So would you join me? Grab your Bible. Open it up or open it up on your phone, your device, whatever it may be, to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is referred to as where a bunch of heroes of faith are mentioned. And this is a very encouraging passage passage of scripture. So Hebrews chapter 11 starting in verse 8. By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went. And even though he didn't come, he didn't know where he was going, by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger In a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who are heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man... As he as good as dead came descendants, as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is alive. We thank you that it is relevant for us today. Our hearts are ready to receive from your word, would you speak to us tonight? In your wonderful name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, I'm sure we've all had a time where we've traveled to visit relatives. And when you arrive, you don't have a, a big plan on how long you're gonna stay, but you just know in your mind you're not gonna stay very long. And so when you get to the relative's house, um, you, as a young kid, you're, maybe you're being told how tall you're getting. Or maybe as an adult, you're being asked instantly, who did you vote for? Or maybe the constant conversation is just about the weather. Maybe you begin to smell certain smells and you realize pretty quickly, yeah, we're not gonna stay here very long. We're just stopping by, we're just passing through. And so you look at Uncle Joe and you put your hand on his shoulder and say, Uncle Joe, hey, we're, we're just stopping by. We're just gonna be here for a little moment. You make eye contact with your family and and they know that look like, hey, don't get comfortable, we're not staying long. So you look at Aunt Ruthie and you say, Aunt Ruthie, we love you. Uh, We love your casserole. We love your five cats, but we're not staying long. We're just stopping by. You know, it's interesting that these Old Testament heroes of faith that we read about, I think they seem to view earth like you and I maybe would view Aunt Ruthie's, that we're just passing through. These Old Testament heroes, they had no intentions of making earth their homestead. Verse 10, Abraham knew the promised land wasn't the end of his journey of faith. He looked forward to a city whose architect and builder was God. They knew they were just traveling through, that their true home was in heaven. Abraham, he lived as a stranger, as a pilgrim. And Christians today are also strangers and pilgrims. Repeatedly, the Bible compares life on earth to living in a foreign country. It uses terms like alien, pilgrim, foreigner, stranger, visitor, sojourner, traveler, just 
to describe our brief stay here on earth. Psalm 119 verse 19 says, I'm a stranger here on this earth. Peter says in 1 Peter 1.17, if you call God your father, live your lives here as strangers in reverent fear. You know, in our community, we have many people who have moved here from other parts of the world to work or to attend school, and they still have citizenship in their home country. But they've been given permission to be here in the United States to attend school or for work, whatever it may be. And so they have this registration card that that allows them to be here to do those things, even though they're not a citizen. And my challenge to us tonight is this, is that you and I, we need to have this mindset, that we have this spiritual work visa, that our home is in heaven, but we're here on temporary assignment here on this earth. Our assignment is from Jesus. Our identity is in eternity, but our homeland is in heaven. So we have this mission to accomplish, even though we're here on earth. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors. An ambassador is a diplomat that is sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. That's what an ambassador is. We have ambassadors all across the world representing the United States. So imagine being asked to be an ambassador for your country to an enemy nation. You would have to learn a new language. You would have to adapt to some of their customs and their differences in order to be polite and accomplish your mission. As an ambassador, you wouldn't be able to isolate yourself from the enemy. You would have to fulfill your mission by being in contact and relating with them. But suppose that you became so comfortable with this foreign country that you fell in love with it. You preferred it actually over your home country. Your loyalty, your commitment, it begins to shift. Your role as an ambassador would be compromised. Instead of representing your home country, you would start to act like the enemy. You would be a traitor. You would, you will have betrayed your country, your king, And as Christians, as Christ's ambassadors into this world, our mission is to declare peace, to bring good news, to bring this message of reconciliation, not war. We represent Jesus as an ambassador. That's our role. That's our mission. But sadly, many Christians have betrayed their king and his kingdom. They've conformed to customs and patterns of this world instead of shining bright being salt. They've blended in, blended into a worldly system that is an enemy of God, antagonistic of God. So my question to us tonight is this, are we living like this? Are we living like an ambassador should? Or or have we laid down that, that mission and that responsibility as an ambassador? 1 Peter 2 11 says, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against your soul. He's urging us as aliens and strangers to abstain from sinful desires that wage war against our soul. The Bible tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion. He wants to devour us. He wants to destroy us. He wants us to be distracted, to be so frustrated in our faith that it is diminished, that we quit, that we walk away. Satan wants us to become comfortable. He wants us to take on the customs of this world, to blend in. And listen closely. Listen, life is too short to waste away in disobedience and sin. We don't have enough time. 70 years may seem like a long time, but we don't have enough time compared to eternity. We have no idea when, when uh, our time here on this earth will be done. We don't have enough time to waste away. It was when Lot stopped being a sojourner and became a resident of Sodom that he lost his testimony and his consecration. So ask yourself, have you set down your rights as an ambassador? Have you set down the mission and the, the assignment 
to be comfortable here on this earth? Are you representing Jesus and his kingdom? Or have you blended into the customs of this world? Because we're not permanent residents of this world, we should not and we cannot conform to it. It's almost as if we're created for something more, right? A fish would never be happy living on land because it wasn't created for that. An eagle would never be satisfied if it wasn't allowed to fly. You and I, we will never feel completely satisfied here on this earth. Why? Because we were made for more. This isn't our final residency. Think about this. Have you ever sensed a dissatisfaction? Have you ever sensed discontentment in life? A longing that cannot be fulfilled? I wonder if in order to keep us from being too attached to earth, I wonder if God allows us to feel this amount of discontentment, a longing for more, in order that we're not so attached to things here on this earth. We're not completely happy here because we were created for this life. Our final home is heaven. There's a great portion from the book of Purpose Driven Life that helps add some color to this. It says, Paul was faithful, yet he ended up in prison. John the Baptist was faithful, but he was beheaded. Millions of faithful people have been martyred. They've lost everything. They have come to the end of life with nothing to show for it. But the end of life is not the end. In God's eyes, the greatest heroes of faith are not those who achieve prosperity, success, and power in this life, but those who treat this life as a temporary assignment and serve faithfully, expecting the promised reward in eternity. Your time on earth is not the complete story of your life. You must wait until heaven for the rest of the chapters. It takes faith, listen, it takes faith to live on earth as a foreigner. There's a story of a retired missionary. He's coming home to America. And he happens to be on the same boat as the president of the United States. And so as this boat begins to come to shore of the United States, the crowds are cheering. The band is playing. The media is there. The red carpet is rolled out all for the president. The banners are welcoming him. And the roar is loud from the crowd. Yet this missionary slips off in the crowd unnoticed. He begins to have self-pity and resentment. He begins to complain to God. God, I've spent my life in another country. I've worked tirelessly to spread the good news. I did not acquire wealth. I sacrificed so much. Why? And then God gently reminds him, but my child, you're not home yet. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. May that be our prayer tonight, that we fix our eyes on what is eternal. I'm guessing that we won't be in heaven for more than two seconds, that we realize how good it is there, and that we'll wonder why we place so much importance on things here on this earth. Listen, life is short. We're here for a purpose, to represent Jesus. So when life gets overwhelming, you're in a season of life just like this, where it's stressful, it's uneasy. Maybe you're beginning to doubt if it's worth living for Christ. Let me remind you of something. You're not home yet. We're just passing through. But while we're here, we have an assignment as an ambassador of Jesus Christ to represent him. So right where you are, would you respond in your hearts? 
pray with me. Maybe you stand in your living room or wherever you may be. Close your eyes and pray with me. God, I pray for those who have lost sight of the mission. I pray for those who have let down their assignments and responsibilities as an ambassador of you, that you would encourage them, that you would remind them that you can still use them, that you still need them, God, that you still have a plan and a purpose for their life. Bring encouragement to them tonight. But I pray that they would find that the strength and the boldness within their spirit to stand back up, to begin to take on that responsibility once again, God, because we know that our time on earth is short and that we don't have time to waste away in sin and disobedience. We don't want to look like this world any longer, God. We want to represent you the best that we can. God, I pray for those that need to be reminded to keep their eyes focused on you, to keep their spirit, their heart remain fixed on what is unseen, but what is eternal. Would you bring encouragement encouragement to them tonight, God? We know that you are faithful. We know that you are with us. And thank you that you've given us a mission. God, may we do the best that we can with your strength and your guidance. So tonight, would you sing with us? Maybe in your living room you can stand, sing out loud, whatever it may be, but would you join us as we sing this final song? I just want more, I just want more, more of you, God, more of you, God. I just want more, I just want more, more of you, God, more of you. I just want more. I just want more, more of you, God, more of you, God. I just want more, I just want more, more of you, God, more of you. Come and reach into my heart, come and hear. I want more of you, just one touch from your robe steals the weakness from my bones, oh, I need more of you, come and reach into my heart, come and heal every part, Lord, I want more of you. One touch from your own steals the weakness from my bones, oh, I need more of you, I just want more, I just want more, more of you, God, more of you, God, I just want more. I just want more, more of you, God, more of you. I just want more, I just want more, more of you, God, more of you, God. I just want more, I just want more. God, that is our prayer tonight. Would you fill us with your Holy Spirit? Fill us with more of you. We need your strength. We need your guidance everywhere we go and every day that we live. Please give us the strength to be an ambassador. You've called us to do that. Would you equip us as well? In your wonderful name, we pray. All right, so here we we go. Before we close, up on the screen, wherever you're watching, There's a question. And what I want you to do is to take time to to answer this. You may be by yourself and you can just answer 
alone, you can jot down your answer, your thoughts about this. If you're with your family, I really challenge you, I encourage you, would you, whether you're gathered around in your living room, you can stand up together and join hands um, and, and pray for each other, but I want you to answer this question, talk through it. This is your assignment. Here's the question, because life here on earth is temporary, is a temporary assignment, how should that change the way I'm living right now? Because life on earth here is a temporary assignment, how should that change the way that I'm living right now? So your assignment tonight is to work through that question, answer it, talk about it amongst your family, and then would you pray for each other? I mean, this is, these are trying times and uh, we need the encouragement and it needs to start at home. So we love you, New Hope. Um, we pray for you daily. We're praying that you have a great week this week. If you need anything, if you need prayer, whatever it may be, would you please contact us? We're gonna do the best that we can. We love you. Have a great week.